We're going to bring in Texas Congressman Ronnie Jackson, a member of the Select Subcommittee on the COVID pandemic, which is meeting later today. He is up very early this morning with us. So, Congressman, obviously, a lot of people want to know. They're very interested in this. You're on this committee. Tell us what we can expect for part two of this hearing. Well, today we're going to look at the intelligence uh, and what was behind it from its intelligence standpoint. We're going to have, as you mentioned, Director Ratcliffe in and a couple of other intelligence experts that are going to come in and talk to us. But, you know, it's, it's abundantly obvious at this particular point that the intelligence, the science, and common sense overwhelmingly point toward this being a lab leak from the Wuhan lab. And uh, this is, we got to get to the bottom of this. This is a real national security issue. We're finding out that Anthony Fauci and, uh, and NIH funded, gave money, of course, to EcoHealth to EcoHealth Alliance, which then gave money to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Now we're finding out that that's probably where this uh, virus originated from. This was also a lab that we now know had a relationship with the Chinese military and their bioweapons program. So we need to know what was going on here. This is important to make sure that we don't have this happen again anywhere in the, in the, in the world ever again. But it's also really important from our national security standpoint and to hold China accountable for what they did. Because when this was, when this was first leaked out, they, they went out of their way to cover this up so that they could hoard all of the uh, protective equipment all over the world and put the rest of the rest of the country at high risk and, and and they continue to try to cover it up and like you said now they're trying to intimidate and come after us the members that are sitting on this committee and try to silence us but it's not going to work so we're going to dig into the intelligence side of it today yeah that letter to brad weinstrup basically saying we're the Chinese embassy, you shouldn't do this, we're gonna tell you what to do. What does that say about how America is viewed thanks to Joe Biden's leadership or lack thereof on the world stage, especially when it comes to places like Russia and China? Well, they, they have no respect for us. I mean, we, we've seen that across, uh, you know, wh whether it's China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. Uh, you know, as I've said before, our, our allies don't respect us anymore and, and don't trust us, and our adversaries don't respect us and don't fear us anymore. And so the, the Chinese are very aggressive about coming after us and trying to intimidate members of Congress, uh, trying to intimidate just anybody they can that, that's spreading the wrong air. You know, early on, they had complete control over the WHO, the World Health Organization, and they were basically uh, formatting talking points for the WHO and telling them exactly what to say and they, they had the WHO and unfortunately a lot of the US press the mainstream media helping them cover up the fact that this probably came from the Wuhan lab and was a lab leak that they should have been responsible for so yeah they they have no respect for for, uh, for our leadership that's abundantly obvious no they sure don't and when China warns the US to back off I'm not quite sure that's in the rundown for what you guys are no. going to be doing meantime two New York no. residents were just arrested for running a secret CCP police station in New York City to spy on and harass dissidents inside the United States. Uh, your reaction to this, because uh, this is very concerning <laughs> on all levels. What? Well, I think this is a coordinated plan. I think you should look at this in conjunction with the story that just broke a few days ago about the fact that there are hundreds of uh, military-aged Chinese ma males that are that are basically uh, amassing in Central America and South America with the intention of coming here and crossing our southern border. I think, to be honest with you, I think that the Chinese are embedding uh, Chinese nationals throughout our country, and this police force that's here is going to be a big part of making sure that they can coordinate and keep them on the same page for whatever their, you know, their, their intended goal is here, which is not going to be good. But I think that, that, that they're, a, uh, they're a force that's intended to coerce and intimidate those that are here that aren't, that aren't, uh, that aren't playing by the Chinese rules and, 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 and accomplishing what the Chinese want to accomplish here in our country. And I think that, that they have more on their way. I think this is very concerning. Yeah, those economic migrants that the Chinese are going to say are coming, somehow they're all paying $30,000, $35,000 to the smugglers to get in here. I don't know a lot of economic f refugees who can afford that, but mm -hmm. Congressman Ronnie Jackson, we got to leave it there. Thank you, sir. Good luck at the hearing today. Get some answers. We need them. Thanks so much.